If I told you that blueberries and blackberries had a different type of fibre in them, or, or strawberries rather than blackberries, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was soluble and insoluble. It's a really quite an ephemeral concept. But when I was looking at fibre a couple of years ago, I wanted to go back to the root research and I said, where is the evidence that fibre is good for health, good for constipation, good for bowel mobility? Because everybody knows that. And you know what? The evidence isn't there. There was only one study that was semi-randomised that trialled people on different levels of fibre in their diet to have a look at their symptoms like constipation and bloating and all of that. And do you know what it found? <coughs> it found that the diets with the highest levels of fibre had the worst symptoms. Now, is that such a strange thing to think about? Everybody here has probably heard of malabsorption syndrome. What is the concept of that? You eat something, let's say you're lactose intolerant, your body can't digest lactose. It lacks lactase enzyme to break it down into glucose and galactose. So this two-part sugar, disaccharide, ends up in your colon where it gets feasted on by bacteria. And those bacteria then produce gas, you end up being bloated. What's the whole premise of fibre? It's undigestible carbohydrate. Where does it end up? In the colon. What happens then? It gets feasted on by bacteria. Is the whole premise of fibre really that different to what we call malabsorption syndrome? 